Hi, this is Dr. Karina Bora. I am a certified yoga instructor and I am also by physiotherapist by profession. And today I have received my five certificates with different forms of yoga. Before going to describe about my certificates, what I have received um, today, I am here due to some of my mostly i have joined the yoga because of my physical reasons and um, by joining this yoga course i have really seen change in my body as well and um, today i have completed my course and uh, there are many i have seen a lot of change in my body and a lot of change in my flexibility in my strength of my body and due to the under the guidance of sir i have learnt many other forms of yoga and um, in a very beautiful and a very good i really gained strength and um, it has really been a great journey and uh, due to some of my physical and personal reasons i have uh, not attended some of my classes uh, but the sir have always been uh, cooperative and supportive and it has been extended for a month for extra months and um, but i have really been grateful to this uh, exhale yoga school by joining and uh, it has really have very five different styles of yoga but uh, coming to the what is yoga yoga is not just about uh, flexibility it is a, it has been a main um, scenario in everyone's mind that it is of flexibility but it's not about just flexibility it is about the strength of your body and it is uh, you have to maintain it main it is of maintenance because the patanjali sutra uh, that is sriram sukham asana means the maintenance of the asana is the important it is not just about uh, performing so here yoga is not uh, yoga you can differentiate yoga and contortion yoga is the um, is it improves your flexibility but it's not in that way of the contortion contortion is different it is a gymnastic uh, formation but here we maintain it and uh, there is not such of maintenance in the contortions you can see and uh, here in yoga you might not even feel of any of any sort of injury so there are different types of uh, yoga there are different types of asan can be performed there are pranayam and meditations there are two types of meditations can be performed modern and ancient and um, and we can also have focus on the pranayam if pranayam there are different types there are kapal sorry um, anulom vilom shitli shitkari bhastrika there are different any still more uh, mostly we concentrate on the ban Ma mainly we perform anulom vilom but we do not concentrate on the bun. There are different types of bun. There are three types of bun in our body. And there are chakras. We can we also focus on them. And uh, by coming to the topic of yoga and the pranayam, pranayam is mainly um, we have to hold the breath. It is not just about inhaling and exhaling. In breathing exercise, we inhale and exhale, but we do not concentrate on the uh, hold. But in pranayam, it is a main, it's a kumbhak. It is also known as kumbhak. And uh, there is a maintenance of, and the holding of the breath is important because it improves the lung capacity, it improves the respiratory system, strength of your respiratory system. It also improves the, uh, co it is good for your digestive system, it overall affects of your whole body. And uh, there are different types of pranayam. It is different, it is, um, the prescribed uh, or it is given to the given to the person according to their uh, conditions we can also prescribe them and uh, here coming to the the certificate which i have received they are first i have committed the flow yoga in flow yoga there are different types of uh, there is we can also perform vinyasa kundalini movements and uh, in we mostly in flow yoga there is a movement of the body we can we there are different movements so we concentrate on the movement not on the uh, maintenance because here 
uh, it improves the strength of your body it improves the strength of your legs your calf your hamstring your pelvic and your back your shoulders it overall helps on your whole body and it is it just not concentrate on your bo- um, one part of your body or one component of your body it concentrate on whole part of the body uh, it concentrate on the twisting it concentrates on the uh, forward bending back bending so it overall works on whole system of your body and in kundalini movements it also concentrates according to it is mainly given according to your um, if you have back pain we perform uh, bridge poses we perform uh, any of the and according to your belly fat if you are um, here to decrease your belly fat then we perform baby steps and we have we can also perform uh, uh, sarvangasana we can also perform um, uh, any of the cat camel if you have back pain you can also perform cat camel so uh, according to your conditions we can also prescribe kundalini movements we also perform and in vinyasa we perform the movements with there is also a surya namaskar can be performed there is different types of surya namaskar surya namaskar a and surya namaskar b these are these are um, given according to the mostly surya namaskar a is of south um, followed by the south uh, country south side and um, there are different types and it can also be given it also be performed in the flow yoga overall the flow yoga concentrates on whole body whole system it it improves um, decreases your heart rate decrease um, and your respiratory rate and also improves maintenance of the bp everything it works so here comes to the pava yoga in pava yoga we also known as grandma's yoga it is the founder of the pava yoga is patabhi and the student of patabhi or brain cast and uh, very winter rich and um, they have they have designed the power yoga in four compo- in four components five components sorry and um, there is a pa- upper body lower body side whole full and also a surya namaskar in power yoga uh, we perform according to the it is mainly uh, focusing on your weight loss and uh, inch loss the person who are cert- who are in the main te- who are uh, concerned on the figure can also perform this pava yoga it is really beneficial it is really it really improves your strength of your body and um, it also focuses on your um, according to the component we perform if you perform lower body it improves your the strengthening of your lower body parts and um, lower like hamstring calf and if you perform upper body it improves the strength of your shoulders your back and um, overall it also improves your uh, strength of your legs hamstring and if you perform the side we perform uh, on the side of on the side part that is um, on the uh, side i mean twist side you can also it also decreases the belly fat and uh, whole body it, it works on whole body parts that is um, mostly we improve the strength and we concentrate on the uh, overall systems of the body here comes also there is a separate power yoga surya namaskar uh, there are different really you can feel benefits beneficial to your body it has really great benefits so it also improves um, maintenance of the weight law weight gain we can also maintain weight and we can also decrease the weight loss the person who are considering on the weight loss can also see the um, effects so next come to the aerial yoga in aerial yoga uh, actually aerial yoga is also known as vayavya yoga and uh, in aerial yoga it is mostly perf- it is the ancient form of yoga it is uh, performed by monks by sons and the bayogis who are uh, performed up in the aerial branches that is uh, banyan tree branches but here now we are modified aerial that is uh, banyan branches to the cloth or it is also known as hammocks and uh, we perform it in above the floor uh, might be 3 to 4 inches above the floor 
and uh, it has uh, different effects because we are performing in the air and it has different it has its own benefits and um, it has a grab it affects the gravitation it has different gravitational effects because it improves the strength of your shoulders because it you hold and um, it also improves your strength of your legs it also improves your strength uh, balancing and uh, mainly it helps in the um, maintenance and you have to maintain it it's not just about the flexibility it improves the flexibility it strengthens your body it in, it uh, balances but you have to maintain it and um, the person who cannot perform the mat or uh, who cannot perform on the mat or uh, on the floor your floor they can easily perform the aerial yoga so you can also perform and it is really uh, some of the for nowadays it is more it is more uh, popular and it is really you can enjoy it and uh, it is more of a you can uh, exper experiment on this and uh, you can enjoy this form of aerial yoga and uh, mostly there are different nowadays it is more popular due to some of aerial dances aerial uh, yoga and uh, other forms because nowadays they prefer different types different uh, style so it is more popular and you can also it also improves your uh, muscular strength um, and uh, respiratory and um, it also improves your core strength arms and uh, hamstring and calf so it it can be done by and it is not just about uh, you can the thin person or i mean slim can be performed it is it can also be performed by the obese obese person also can perform uh, you cannot uh, uh, prescribe according to body shape it is can be done in all for in all body types so aerial yoga is the best and uh, it has its own benefits so next comes to the prenatal yoga prenatal yoga yeah we can also perform prenatal yoga and we can also train pregnant women and uh, it has um, other format in prenatal yoga we perform first the kundalini movements in kundalini movements we connect we, it has a different form it has different effect it uh, improves the strength it improves the maintenance of the back or uh, it improves the posture because uh, later on the pregnant woman has uh, put on weight so they might also have bad posture which, which affects in the post natal post natal uh, you post natal so we prescribe the kundalini movements and uh, later on we come to different asanas according to the trimester there are three trimesters um, so according to that we prescribe the asana and uh, there are pranayam uh, in pranayam we should not we uh, warn or we give them the advice that we should not hold the breath and uh, later on we have om chanting there is before performing the prenatal yoga we have to see that the that the person or the pregnant pregnant woman have a consent of the doctor and um, we have to see the we have to see what uh, we can um, avoid if there are such conditions we should not perform the prenatal yoga and if the if the prenatal or the pregnant woman is having uh, any heart issues any lung any um, vaginal bleeding or dizziness or shortness of breath or um, uh, any of the if they are having a triplets or um, twins we should not perform and if they are having short cervix such conditions such such conditions we should not uh, perform the prenatal yoga so we have to avoid and we have to inform them that we, while performing the yoga we should not hold the breath we should not concentrate uh, on the maintenance but we should uh, it should be at least of three seconds uh, they can also maintain for short time but it is not to hold the breath they should uh, also we should also give them a rest uh, that is a resting asana of even after each asana we can also give them restorative form and uh, restorative pose then we can also perform a uh, savasana and we can also perform child so child pose also can be performed 
so there are different forms and it really according to pranayam there is this uh, trimester according to trimester we have uh, prescribed or uh, differentiated the asan in first trimester we perform the standing asan like uh, standing like vrikshasan we can also be performed veer badrasan can also be performed and uh, in second trimester we perform the sitting that is uh, we can also perform a seated circular movements and um, uh, we can also perform ardha machinjasan in different variations we can perform and we can also perform gomukhasan and in third trimester we perform on the uh, lying asans like um, we, uh, like vishnu asan can be performed by and also can perform devi asan these are the asans can be performed but we have to be supportive we should not uh, let them perform alone because due to the body weight they may also lose the balance so it is necessary to um, be as a supporter and um, we should also while performing also we should also uh, give them a reminder that you have to not hold the breath we should concentrate on the inhale and exhaling and do not over push or do not over stretch your body because it might also uh, decreases the oxygen level of the baby and the mother so it might later on um, affects the and the and the pregnant woman might feel discomfort or dizziness so we should not we should have a reminder we should uh, we should give them advice that we should not be hold, we should not hold the breath or do not over push and uh, later on coming to the pranayam in pranayam we perform the anulom and uh, anulom vilom shitali shitkari because uh, here we should not uh, allow them to hold the breath or do not over push because it mostly gives a cooling uh, if you perform the anulom vilom there is a alternate uh, breathing from the left and right nostrils and uh, if you perform the shitli and shitkari it is it gives a cooling effect in your body and uh, it improves the sh it improves the lung system that is the lung capacity and it mostly concentrates on the respiratory system and the stop and the digestive system here while performing the pranayam we should uh, also give them advice if um, about the ban but in uh, prenatal we might also not concentrate because it might also feel discomfort so later on coming to the om chanting that is the ch we also prefer the chanting mantras to them because it mostly it is it has their own benefits it has it has been the more powerful uh, mantras they can also perform uh, om om chanting or uh, om namah shivai according to their uh, convenience and uh, we should not we should not uh, make them perform the long chanting mantras because due to the long duration that is the long uh, mantras can also affect them uh, can also feel uh, uneasy or uh, discomfort and uh, they might also due to that they might also feel um, oxygen there might be a dec decrease in the oxygen level between the child and the mother so we should not perform long chanting mantras so if i have exp i have experienced from the pre pregnant women that they have felt the connection they have uh, felt the precious moments while performing the chanting mantras uh, they they have felt the moment of the baby and the, those beautiful moments can be captured in this prenatal yoga so here there is a great bonding between the mother and the it creates great bonding between the mother and the child and uh, so it is very uh, beautiful uh, experience after uh, having the those beautiful outcomes from your be wonderful outcomes from your pre pregnant women so next coming to the restorative yoga in restorative yoga uh, restorative yoga is also known as kusha yoga in uh, here in ancient times the kush kusha yoga is performed on the kush means that is the on the grass on the on the animal skin but nowadays we perform on the mat and uh, it has uh, it is prescribed according to the surgeries or any of the back pain issues or it is of mostly of the resting or you can regain the flex um, conditions according to according to condition 
we have prescribed this uh, restorative poses so in restorative poses there are bolsters used because by the bolster but with the help of bolster we design we um, form the pose and we uh, we prescribe them for the resting uh, resting pose and these restorative your poses or for the post surgical like uh, surgeries uh, like hip replacement knee replacement uh, and uh, shoulder shoulder dislocation any such conditions or surgeries uh, like also for the heart that is um, any of the heart surgeries can also perform these uh, uh, asan these poses so they can for example we go for the back pain we go for bridge pose we also perform um, uh this the rest savasana also can be performed for the back pain and if you go for the neck pain we can also perform the cervical cervical uh, pose and uh, there are different according uh, different asana different poses according to the conditions can be prescribed so uh, it is a very good it has its own benefits like such as it affects the respiratory system it also has um, on the digestive systems if we can also perform andukasan you can also perform ushtrasan in the respiratory pose uh, with the supportive and uh, it has really been uh, benef beneficial for the pregnant women even because uh, if they are unable to perform due to some of the extent later on due to put putting weight they cannot perform such of the asans so we also prescribe them this restorative asan so later on uh, coming to this and uh, if you have uh, diabetic if the if the person is diabetic we can also perform matsyasan or any other thyroid if they are having a thyroid issue they can also perform matsyasan if they are having uh, they can also perform uh, uh, this ushtrasan so if the if the person is um, diabetic we can also perform mandukasan so according to conditions we prescribe restorative poses so later on coming to the it has uh, it mostly affects the resting it uh, also affects for the uh, anxiety depression it calms down your body it calms down your mind it is really good and uh, benefic uh, beneficial for the body for the whole body so it calms down it is a resting it reverses the condition and um, that's it and it has it has been a great journey for in the in this excel yoga school and uh, it has really taught us many uh, how to be con how to be consistent how you have to maintain your poses how it should be done um, how how much time it should be maintained um, and it is not just about the maintenance it is of it is about the uh, performance we have to be consistent to this if you are not consistent it is not the more beneficial and uh, it really reverses the conditions if you are having any of the physical uh, problems you can reverse by doing yoga and uh, it it is a less, it is a slow process but it is a really beneficial it doesn't harm your any body system it is really good uh, to your whole body me being the um, beginner i have um, i was not able to some of the asanas some of here i have learned many of the asanas it have really improved my strength and uh, i was not able to perform any of the shirshasan now i am able to perform shirshasan and uh, i have really improved my shoulder strength my uh, arm strength and my back it has been a great I, before joining i was not uh, confident that i would have uh, come perform such of the asanas which i want to perform uh, but before completing this course i have really gained such of the strength and i was i'm really now able to perform these uh, asanas which i have dreamed of uh, by seeing some of the videos i want to perform them but now i am able to perform them because of the guidance of the sir samit dave sir and um, it has really improved uh, this um, strength and um, it has been really a great journey 
and uh, thankfully thanking to the sir, to the summer zavi sir and uh, this exil yoga school it has really been a great journey thank you